Well, good afternoon. Thank you all for, for being here. I'm pleased to be joined by uh, my wife, Pam. Pam, thank you for being here as well. There has been much public discussion about racist and offensive materials that appear on my page of the 1984 Eastern Virginia Medical School yearbook. And I believe it is important for Virginians to hear directly from me and, to, and for me to answer as many questions as are necessary about these circumstances. With that in mind, I would like to read a statement about these events, and then I will be glad to take your questions. Yesterday, I took responsibility for content that appeared on my page in the Eastern Virginia Medical School yearbook that was clearly racist and offensive. I am not and will not excuse the content of the photo. It was offensive, racist, and despicable. When my staff showed me the photo in question yesterday, I was seeing it for the first time. I did not purchase the EVMS yearbook, and I was unaware of what was on my page. When I was confronted with the images yesterday, I was appalled that they appeared on my page, but I believe then and now that I am not either of the people in that photo. I stand by my statement of apology to the many Virginians who were hurt by seeing this content on a yearbook page that belongs to me. It is disgusting. It is offensive. It is racist. And it was my responsibility to recognize and prevent it from being published in the first place. I recognize that many people will find this difficult to believe. The photo appears with others I submitted on a page with my name on it. Even in my own statement yesterday, I conceded that based on the evidence presented to me at the time, the most likely explanation that it was indeed me in the photo. In the hours since I made my statement yesterday, I reflected with my family and classmates from the time and affirmed my conclusion that I am not the person in that photo. While I did not appear in this photo, I am not surprised by its appearance in the EVMS yearbook. In the place and time where I grew up, many actions that we rightfully recognize as abhorrent today were commonplace. My belief that I did not wear that costume or attend that party stems in part from my clear memory of other mistakes I made in this same period of my life. That same year, I did participate in a dance contest in San Antonio, in which I darkened my face as part of a Michael Jackson costume. I look back now and regret that I did not understand the harmful legacy of an action like that. It is because my memory of that episode is so vivid that I truly do not believe I am in the picture in my yearbook. You remember these things. As I began my career and met my wife, Pam, I also began to develop a stronger understanding of this country's history and the harm that certain actions and attitudes cause. That does not excuse my behaviors up to that point but it did offer me an opportunity to change and to grow, and I took it. I pursued my career as a soldier, a physician, and as a public servant because I wanted to help people. The experiences I had in each of those chapters and the people I met along the way helped me form a set of values that define the person I am now and the way I aspire to lead this Commonwealth as your governor. In some ways, my personal history mirrors that of this Commonwealth. There are actions and behaviors in my past that were hurtful. But like Virginia, I have also made significant progress in how I approach these issues. I am far from perfect, and I can always strive to do more. But I have devoted my entire life, my career in the Army, as a pediatrician, and in public service to making life better for all people, no matter who they are. Today, 
I am not ready to ask Virginians to grant me their forgiveness for my past actions. I also do not fully expect that they will immediately believe my account of these events. Right now, I am simply asking for the opportunity to demonstrate beyond a shadow of a doubt that the person I was is not the man I am today. I am asking for the opportunity to earn your forgiveness. If I were to listen to the voices calling on me to resign my office today, I could spare myself from the difficult path that lies ahead. I could avoid an honest conversation about harmful actions from my past. I cannot in good conscience choose the path that would be easier for me in an effort to duck my responsibility to reconcile. I took an oath to uphold this office and serve the people of this Commonwealth to the best of my ability. As long as I believe I can effectively fulfill that task, I intend to continue doing the business of Virginia. I believe this moment can be the first small step to open a discussion about these difficult issues and how they contribute to the greater racism and discrimination that defines so much of our history. This very house stands as a monument to the dark and complicated history of this Commonwealth. These walls are adorned with portraits of men and women who owned slaves, actively oppressed people of color, as well as men and women who stood tall and advanced the causes of equality and racial justice in the Commonwealth and this country. In that discussion, it will not be my role to speak to Virginians about these issues. My responsibility is to listen, to learn, and to continue to grow as a man and as a leader. I am ready for an honest conversation about racial injustice and the need for real reconciliation, real justice, and real equality. I believe the agenda this administration is pursuing clearly demonstrates the progress both I and our Commonwealth have made since the darkest chapters of our history. I promise to fight for a Virginia that works better for all people and our commitment to economic justice, access to health care, criminal justice reform, educational equity, and a clean environment reflect those priorities. As this conversation moves forward, I want to hear from Virginians from every walk of life about how we can fight even harder to build the Virginia that they deserve. Before I take questions, I want to take this opportunity to apologize to the many people who have been hurt by this episode and mistakes that I have made in the past. 